Okay, here we have a radioactive isotope which is emitting gamma waves in all directions like this. Okay, so it's basically emitting in a sphere. Okay, so we want to look at how the intensity of the radiation varies with distance. So how does it differ from point X to point Y, which is slightly further away? So we're going to look at the intensity equation, which is power divided by area. The power emitted from the radioactive isotope depends on the gamma photons that are emitted. So the energy of each gamma photon times the number of gamma photons emitted per unit time. So that's basically the activity, how much radioactive decay is occurring in a given certain amount of time. And then the area was well, spreading out in a sphere, so that's 4 pi r squared. So if we ignore everything that's constant, we can see the di relationship with distance is that the intensity is propo inversely proportional to the distance squared. So this is what we call the inverse square law. And if you want to turn this into an equation, you just introduce a constant like this, where k should be a constant. Okay, in this example, we have a GM tube which is placed at a distance of 5 centimeters away from a reactor source. The counter displays a count rate of 120 counts per minute, and the background count rate is 20 counts per minute. The gamma source is then moved to a distance of 10 centimeters away from the reactor source, and now we're asked to determine the new count rate displayed on the GM counter. So first thing we have to do is actually notice that the 120 isn't the corrected count rate. We're going to have to subtract the background radiation. So 120 minus the 20 gives us a corrected count rate of 100 um, counts per second. And then we can now apply the effect of the change in distance. So we expect it to get weaker, less intense. So we're going to use the inverse square law there. So what are we doing to the distance? So we can see the distance is being doubled. So we're doubling the distance. But that's going to get squared. So in fact, the intensity is going to be a quarter. Okay, this is what the inverse square law is. And if you triple the distance, for example, it would become a ninth. So we're going to quarter it here. Okay, so 100 divided by 4. But the question is actually asking for the new count rate displayed on the GM counter. The GM counter uh, is still going to pick up the background radiation, so we need to add that back on to give the actual reading given by the detector. Okay, in part B of this question, we're asked to state the assumption made when we carried out the calculation in part A. So when we did the calculation, we used the inverse square law. In, in doing so, we assume that it's a gamma source that it's emitting in all directions. So it could, if it was an alpha or a beta, it, could, it won't necessarily fall the inverse square law. So we assume that it's, not, it's only emitting gamma and that it's not emitting any alpha or beta. Okay, in this question, the table shows the measurement of the count rate detected by GM2 placed at various distances from a radioactive source. Determine if the radioactive source follows the inverse square law. Okay, so we've got the corrected count rate already. The inverse square law is written here. Okay, so that k there is a constant, and one way to check if this data follows the inverse square law is to check if the k, which I've rearranged for right here, is actually a constant. So I need to do the intensity. In this case, I'm going to use the count rate as the intensity and times the distance squared. So the first set of data, we've got 71 times 0 0.4 squared, that gives you 11.2, and then 11.1, 0 for the second set, and then 8.32. So as you can see, the first two are roughly the same, but the last one is different. So that means this does not follow the inverse square law, because those numbers should be the, the same if it follows the inverse square law. So possible reason, as you can see, is decreasing the constant as we get further, is because maybe the source is emitting a different type of radiation. Maybe it's emitting beta, which isn't reaching the 0 0.80 meters, or not much of it is reaching it. So that's why that constant could be changing. Okay, describe a graphical method which can be used to check if the data in the table follows the inverse square law. Okay, so graphical method here means drawing a graph. Okay, so inverse square law is here. And we're going to figure out what to plot on the y and the x-axis. So the best type of graph to plot in physics is a straight line. Okay, so I'm going to write the equation of line, y equals mx plus c. And I'm going to rearrange my inverse square law to, to a slightly easier form, like this. So I've just separated that k like that. Okay, so on my y-axis, I can plot intensity. On my x-axis, I should plot 1 over the distance squared. This means the thing that's multiplying the 1 over distance squared, k, is going to be my gradient. Okay, and there shouldn't be any y-intercept because there's nothing being added there on the inverse square law. Okay, so I'm going to plot that on my y-axis and in my x-axis. I'm going to need a new column okay, for 1 over distance squared. I'm going to write those numbers down like that. And when I plot the graph, I should get a straight line that's going through the origin. Now, if I don't get a straight line and going through the origin, that means the data does not follow the inverse square law.